the, the lunar uh, lander is uh, the ESA mission uh, to be launched in 2018 and is a, a precursor mission to prepare for human exploration. Uh, our ambition is that one day an European astronaut will be able to walk on the moon. The meeting today uh, deals uh, with the question um, how can we prepare a future human expansion from low Earth orbit to the planetary system. So we think a good preparation will be a robotic mission to the moon to prepare future human missions. So we deal with a landing on a spot on the moon which is close to the South Pole. And what I'm doing is I'm uh, giving my knowledge, what knowledge I have of, of lunar soils, which I've been working on for 40 years. And so I, I have a different perspective than most of the people that are here, which are mainly engineers. And so I'm saying to them, um, are you sure you're going to find what you're telling me? So I play devil's advocate. And those rocks, are uh, they actually accumulate extra things from outside the moon. They accumulate atoms that come out of the sun all the time. And this is a process which has been going on for you know, four and a half billion years. Atoms from the sun, mostly hydrogen, have been colliding with the moon, penetrating the dust grains, knocking bits off the dust grains as a very, very slow erosional process and producing water, tiny, tiny amounts of water. But if you add up all the water that could have been produced over four and a half billion years and then move it to the lunar poles, then you could end up with, you know, a percent or so of water. And uh, this would be really, really useful to us for the future of exploring the solar system. So we have water in the moon, water on the moon. We have different origins. The one on the moon is what we call exogenic. It has a, a, a genesis. It was formed from an exterior source. The one that we have inside the moon is what we call endogenic because it has a, a genesis from the uh, inside the moon. And now the question is, how did the moon get this water? Uh, we thought it was always bone dry. We, there was no water around, and I was one of the biggest proponents of saying that it was bone dry back in the 70s. And all of a sudden now, I have to admit that maybe I was wrong. People thought the moon was completely dry. This has changed due to recent space missions, so that we uh, now have a picture that there might be a lot of volatile gases, including the solar wind implanted uh, materials, hydrogen, nitrogen, carbon, but also water. But one of the, one of the uh, L Cross investigators actually said yesterday, you know, we can do no more from orbit. We can, cannot answer any more questions about what, how much of this water is there, where did it come from, why is it there, what's its significance for you know, future programs. The only way we can answer these questions is to have a lander and get down and answer you know, the how, why, where, and so forth. Um, there are ideas that uh, part, partly water is also present in the illuminated areas close to the pole. And this is what we want to find out. That would make our life much easier. We could go back to various equatorial places again to demonstrate that we could land on the moon. But the science that we could do would not be as fundamentally interesting as go to the pole then you can do a whole lot of new science that, is, uh, that answers questions that people have been puzzling about since we had the lunar landers 40 years ago. So this is a very important reason. If you want to demonstrate the technology, demonstrate the technology to get the bonus of the extra science.